It is now time for members' statements. The member for Brampton North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Everyone in this province has the right to be safe and to feel free. That is why keeping our community safe is our top priority, and it is obliged of us that we do the best we can to ensure that. Our paramedics, police officers, correctional officers and firefighters across the province are instrumental in making that happen. These professionals put their life on the line each and every day to help others in dangerous and life-threatening situations. Therefore, it is only fair that we assist them in their times of need. After meeting with firefighters, paramedics, the police, correctional officers, as well as associations and unions that represent them, one thing is clear, the government needs to do more for those who are exposed to trauma as a natural and unavoidable part of their work and consequently develop post-traumatic stress disorder. We need to commit to working with our forces across the province and increase investment in mental health and other programs so those who need the support can access it in a timely and dignifying manner. While recognition of the post-traumatic stress among frontline and first responders continues to grow, the access to services they receive to develop them with their PTSD remains uneven, and this has often been a fight every step along the way. These professionals deserve better, and I sincerely hope this government makes the necessary investments to ensure that they get the services they so dearly need and deserve. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Stormont Dundas, South Glengarry. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I rise today to celebrate the life of a successful Cornwall businessman, Jerry Benson. In 1953, Jerry founded the Benson Group, headquartered in Cornwall, that would become one of the largest automotive businesses in eastern Canada, serving over 100 locations from Capas Casing to Windsor to Trois Rivières. One of the most recent additions to the Benson Group is a tire retre retreading facility in Cornwall. With his business firmly established, our riding benefited greatly from Jerry's philanthropy. In 2002, he sponsored the Benson Charity Golf Classic that would ri raise more than $500,000 for local charities. Jerry's surname is now synonymous with Cornwall's hockey after the company became forward to be the main sponsor for the city's new multi-recreational facility, the Benson Center. The company, through Jerry, also made an imprint on education by supporting the automotive department at the Cornwall campus of St. Lawrence College. Jerry also spearheaded the cre creation of the University Steering Committee, which he chaired to attract university education to Cornwall. He work, his work culminated with the announcement in 2015 of a new credit transfer agreement between Carleton University and St. Lawrence College. His continued investment in his time and connections led to the creation of the Cornwall Innovation Centre in 2017, modelled after the Carleton's Lead to Win program. The centre spawned the Ontario Emerging Jobs Institute earlier this year, a me medium-term project that will bring students to the NAV Centre to learn skills in the agritech agri and related businesses. For his lifelong efforts, Jerry was awarded a Lifetime Achievement, Achievement Award by the Cornwall Chamber of Commerce and received the Queen Elizabeth uh, Diamond Jubilee Medal. So, on behalf of my con constituents of Stormont, Dundas, and South Glengarry, I'd like to offer my condolences to J uh, Jerry's wife, Claudette, the children, Marty, James, Kelly, and Joy, and their families. Thank you for letting Sh Jerry work with the community. Member statements. The member for St. Paul's. Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker. Um, I rise today with shared disgust um, on the proposed cuts to the ODSB to OW. And I have a letter here from Sammy Joe, one of our constituents. I'm going to read an uh, uh, excerpt from her letter. Um, I am writing this letter in the hopes that you will fight for the lives of people dependent on social assistance, many of whom face other barriers and marginalizations. I am writing to respond to, to the rhetoric and actions of the current Ford government to restructure social assistance, including ending the basic income pilot project. I am a child of deaf adults. The deaf community is my community. The decision to implement a review restructuring of social assistance without consultation with the deaf and the disabled communities is an insult. The lives of my loved ones, friends and clients depend on this support. 
If the best social assistance is a job, like this government claims, what resources are actually be being given to ensure that we have real jobs, meaningful, healthy, livable jobs? And what about those who can't work a nine-to-five? Please bring these concerns to, to Parliament. Please represent the deaf and disabled constituents here in St. Paul's. Social assistance isn't charity. It is action and support that can help to equalize many of the injustices in our society. I fear the changes Minister Lisa McLeod will implement in November. Poverty, she forgot, is a disability issue. Thank you, and thank you, Sammy Joe. Member statements. The member for Markham Unionville. I would like to recognize the amazing work that Across Your Hub does every day for our youth in GTA. This charitable com community organization assists young people's social, emotional, cultural, physical, and spiritual growth. Across Your Hub was established 40, uh, 14 years ago, but in the meantime has managed to serve 81,000 participants through over 149 developmental programs. Recently, I attended their 11th annual fundraising gala, which showcased East Asian culture. Poetry and musical performance, all performed by Across Your Hub participants. Across Your Hub has been successfully in its aims with assisting its members, and during their reception dinner, I was able to truly realize it. A, testi a testimony given on behalf of one of the participants shed light on a young man's struggle with depression and low self-esteem and how this organization, through its various programs, provide him with the skill and confidence necessary to overcome the challenges he was facing. Mr. Speaker, as a long-time supporter of this organization, I'm happy to bring this organization's work to light, and I look forward to continue years of support towards their outstanding efforts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The member for London Fanshawe. Speaker, today I rise to address the Minister of Education on behalf of my constituents in London Fanshawe, whose children and families are still waiting for funding to arrive at the Thames Valley District School Board. The community of Summerside in my riding has been waiting for over a decade for a school to be built. Others like Masonville Public School, Tweedsmere Public School, Kettle Creek Public School are also waiting. In addition to schools, much needed childcare and family centres are also on the line in London. It's not fair to the families and children of London. They have waited a long, long enough for these projects. Your own Minister of Health said the money for these projects has been allocated. There is no pause or delay in the approval process for these capital projects. So what's the holdup? The member from Elgin Middlesex London has now decided to stir the pot on this issue by blaming the school board for holding up the process. The finger pointing and the political games have to end. We are talking about children's education here. The constant delay to score political points are self-serving and do nothing to help children and families. My constituents in Summerside cannot wait another year for a school. It is my hope that this reapproval process is not a tool for the government to delay funding or deny funding for the badly needed education infrastructure. So I would like to invite the Minister of Education to sit down and talk about what the ministry needs to get these projects moving forward. Thank you, Speaker. Member for Scarborough Agent Court. Mr. Speaker, I would like to express my warmest congratulations to St. Paul's Lamoro Church for their 177-year anniversary. Since its establishment in 1840, St. Paul has been an integral part of Scarborough Agent Court riding. The church has served many generations and continue to be a place where families, friends gather for Sunday services, social gatherings, and outreach programs. In 1970s, the church visionary leaders joined other organizations in the area to establish the Agent Court Community Services, an organization committed to serving those in dire need in a Scarborough Agent Court. Furthermore, since 1978, 
the church has hosted the SPLC senior residency and has shared an integral relationship with the award-winning St. Paul's Lamoro Center. St. Paul's continues to address the needs of our community and wholeheartedly provides programs to families, youth, seniors, children, and newcomers. They have also worked hard to promote a sense of community among residents to encourage and drive involvement. The diversity of the parish, with those in attendance coming from many cultural and ethnic backgrounds, is a looking glass into the whole of Scarborough Agent Court. The contribution of St. Paul Church are an integral to making the Scarborough Agent Court a great place to set roots, raise family, and do business. I extend my best wishes for successes in their mission, and I look forward to working with them for many years to come. Thank you. The member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise during this festive season, and I know many people in Kingston and the Islands are looking forward to getting to spend time with their friends and family. And, and it's a community that has many, many events in, the, in this season. Uh, I'll just run through a couple of them. On November 30th, Downtown Kingston will once again host Festive Friday, an event featuring many downtown businesses, a photo booth with Mr. and Mrs. Claus, a drag queen gift wrapping in support of Kingston Pride. We have the Lumina, Lumina Borealis light show uh, between the 30th of November and January 5th at the Fort Henry National Historic Site. The internationally acclaimed National Ballet Theatre of Odessa, Ukraine, is bringing the Nutcracker on the 5th and 6th. Uh, on the 6th, to the 9th, Art Fest Kingston's Christmas Art and Craft Show will be at the Thousand Island Sportsplex. The Wolf Island Santa Claus Parade is on December 8th, and I had the pleasure of attending the Kingston Santa Claus Parade last night, and I had a great time. I was dressed as Buddy the Elf. It was a lot of fun. Uh, on December 9th, stop by the Outdoor Christmas Market on Sydenham Street, truly a one-of-a-kind event inspired by European outdoor markets. And our ongoing holiday market runs uh, in the building on the corner of Brock and Wellington through till December 22nd. Mr. Speaker, these are just a few of the many, many events that are happening in my riding, and I encourage everyone in Kingston to get out and be a part of this holiday season. So be on behalf of all residents, I want to wish everyone in Kingston and the islands a safe, joyful, and happy holiday season. Thank you. The member for Mississauga Centre. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was thrilled to participate in Careers Day at Holy Name of Mary College All Girls School in Mississauga this past Friday. Standing before 60 young women, grades 9 to 12, I had the privilege of sharing my story. I spoke about my experience of immigrating to Canada as a 12-year-old and being raised by a hard-working single mom. I spoke about the path that led me to become an ER registered nurse to help patients navigate through the most tragic of health circumstances. And finally, we had a little politics one-on-one -on -one fun talking about the different levels of government and what a day in the life of an MPP looks like. I also learned about some of the independent projects that these young women are working on, including DREAM, a student who started a nonprofit that repurposes infant incubators to be sent to developing countries, and Alessia, a student who started an initiative to enhance education for young girls and women. I was truly inspired to hear these students' ideas and to have a discussion not only about our polit political system, but also about the importance of faith and Catholic education. Looking back, having female leaders such as Marie skłodowska curie or our very own ministers, Christine Elliott or Laurie Scott, to look up to for inspiration was a major driver which propelled me to where I am today, and I'm truly grateful. Mr. Speaker, it was an immense privilege to have had the opportunity to share my story and learn from these young women. With such bright leaders of tomorrow, I am confident that our future is in good hands. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member statements. The member for Richmond Hill. Mr. Speaker, I'm a mother of four children but I have been serving at the special need group for more than 10 years. I always give applause to all the parents who have taken care of the special need children. Whether they are just one child in the family or two children, it is really draining for those parents. 
I had the honor of going to visit Rena, that is in Richmond Hill. I tour through their, their site, and I'm really impressed of how many people coming together in the community to help the families, to help the children with autistic challenges. Uh, last week, I was at the Rena Gala, and also in just uh, on Sunday, I was uh, in the Chinese community, they have the under the banyan tree, all together supporting the people of the autistic children. I, Mr. Speaker, I would like to encourage our House to also see that need, and I'm thankful that our government is already putting 1.9 billion and match up with the federal government with 3.8 billion to support the special need as well as the mental health community. Way to go! We continue to support them, and my heart goes out to them. Thank you. Thank you. Reports by committees.